One of the leading critics of the war on AIDS is Professor Stefan Lanka, a German biologist and virologist who questions the isolation of HIV and many contradictions and lack of proper scientific reasoning behind the HIV theory, including the wrong form of treatment for a person with AIDS. The background of, of AIDS, and we are absolutely sure about this, is the antibiotic resistance catastrophe, killing people in hospitals like flies, because there are no antibiotics available without resistance in some bacteria. So in a state of immune suppression in the hospital, a lot of people come down with, with bacterial infections. This is called sepsis because of blood poisoning. When too much bacteria are growing and producing toxins, this is going to kill them in a state of reduced immunity. And we had these problems already in the beginning of the 70s. There have been kind of emergency conferences dealing with the problem because they were scared that uh, resistance would spread and uh, they have no antibiotic available. So they invented a very strong antibioticum. And it's, it's, it's not an antibioticum to say it's, it's pure chemotherapy. It's a double folic acid antagonist. The good old sulfonamide and two of them put together would kill every microbe. But the problem is they were scared that in the gay scene new resistance would develop and spread into the population. It was in June 81 when the first publication came out, published by the Centers of Disease Control, saying five men had PCP and two of them died even being treated with Septream this last uh, or the strongest uh, antibioticum available. The AIDS definition was there before, saying if you have PCP and if you have uh, 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 KS, uh, caused by, uh, by, by nitrites as well, because the nitrites are transformed into NO only in the smallest uh, vessels, because the partial pressure of oxygen is high enough to perform this transformation. And NO is a very potent growth stimulant. So we have this uh, uh, neoplasia and hyperplasia in the endothelia. And this condition is called uh, a Carposi uh, sarcoma. AIDS started partly when they said that it's possible to, uh, to measure the, the, the strength of the immune system, um, analyzing or counting T4 cells, the so to say uh, helper cells. But that's not, imp that's not possible. And it has already been published in 81 in the journal JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association, saying that it makes no sense to count subsets even of lymphocytes because there was never a correlation. It could be high or low and people are healthy or ill, it doesn't matter. So this was already known. But the problem was in, uh, at this time already that in, in medicine people would not look to the facts but what, what is possible to sell on the market because it was the year 1977 when it became possible to patent uh, medical techniques. So they wouldn't care if there is any uh, a clinical meaning behind those measurements but they just sold it on the market. And the model of immunology would say at this time ah, if the immune system is weak, so cancer would appear. And that has been fundamentally mistaken, and it was wrong when they said it in 81. They knew it already in 1980 that this has been wrong. The immune surveillance theory of cancer came into existence when the war against cancer failed. They were working with the test, uh, with cells in the test tube, and say, look, we have a high activity of reverse transcription, therefore a virus must be inside and the virus is the cause of cancer. But the nature of cancer is much different and when they found reverse transcription everywhere they gave up the idea that retroviruses would cause cancer and they were not speaking about it anymore but wasted billions of dollars into this and developed chemotherapy based on this idea that the the multiplication of genetic material, and they were thinking of the viruses, should be blocked. So they developed uh, molecules which were incorporated in the growing chain of uh, newly to build up uh, genetic material, and which would kill the build up or prevent the build up of uh, 
this genetic molecule and the cell eventually has to die. The idea of retroviruses in cancer is long over, but the chemotherapy still is there because it's sold and uh, they have no idea why, no rational explanation why they are using chemotherapy. We know what is reverse transcription. That's the repair of uh, mechanism of the ends of the chromosomes. Yeah? And uh, therefore we have high activity in cancer cells or Montagnier embryonic cells. But Montagny never said that he found the, the virus of, of, of AIDS. He said this could be a, probably an effect and uh, to be carefully studied. When he came up with his first test, he tested 30% of the American blood donators, so let's say the, the general population, he tested them positive. And the industry said, no, go home, Gallo. We won't buy your test because this is going to destroy our business. And the only thing what he did, he lowered the sensitivity of the antibody test. And that you can read in, 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 the, in your library. You shouldn't believe me a single word. That's, that's about science. Check it. I'm not speaking about thesis, opinions, or, you know, things, you know, foggy things. No, everything is there, and we reach the bottom line. There's no way out. They designed a test to select gay people. And when, of course, he's stimulating the, the, the cell with all kinds of mitogens, carcinogens, and he, of course, added hydrocortisone, which he hasn't published. But this matters. They added hydrocortisone like people under persistent stress, hypercortisolism, that the same proteins are produced. Since 92, uh, there is no Western blot uh, in, 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 in Great Britain because uh, they saw it's a waste of money, you know. It's, it's the same uh, uh, principle. The only clinical picture which the different risk groups have in common, that's hepatitis. You don't find a single uh, biopsy confirmed PCP in hemophiliacs or in drug abusers other than homosexuals. But they overcame the problem that every uh, gay person who admits drug abuse would be in the, in the uh, list of drug abusers. So they have some PCP cases. But a drug abuser or a woman, a drug abusing woman not using poppers, never, never, never comes down with PCP. They have the definition for women with AIDS, that's kind of the idea of the throat, right? Not of the mouth, but even when a medical doctor sees a little bit candida in the mouth, they would say it's an AIDS case, even when tested negative. That's also very, very in, in important that uh, you don't need a positive test. You, even a negative test would declare you to be an AIDS case when they um, uh, confirm that you have a, a PCP. It's not possible to measure the strength of your immune system um, using the blood. It makes no sense because only 2% of those white blood cells or lymphocytes are said to be responsible for immune functions are in the blood. All the others are in the tissues where they have to do their work. It's like looking outside to the street, onto the street, and counting the police cars coming by every day. And you would count ten usually, and but suddenly uh, only three. And uh, and then you would say uh, uh, seven of those policemen, or uh, you know, caught up or were killed by the by the virus mafia in the Bronx. But that's that's completely mistaken. They are probably somewhere else to do their job, and that's how it works in our body. To say that all of you have to die, how unfair, how unjust, how cruel. They went too far, you know, declaring an absolute uh, 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 death sentence in AIDS. From the first five cases, only two died, the three survived. So that's very clear that they built it up uh, a, a system of, of, of belief because they were misusing the gay scene of New York City from 78 till 80 in order to isolate the hepatitis B vaccine out of them. So they perfectly knew already what kind of proteins and what kind of antiproteins, the antibodies, they have inside their blood and inside their body. So it was very easy for the ones who set up antibody tests to uh, produce similar proteins like uh, uh, the body would produce under persistent stress. And that has been done. I think about uh, Septrim, you know, the FDA says this should be given only a 14 days maximum. 
Otherwise, your own blood, blood picture is going to be destroyed irreversibly, means for the rest of the life, because the damages became inherited. Because it's septrim, it's pure chemotherapy, it acts on a genetic level. This is why those kind of antibiotic care are so effective, because they are destroying the genetic material of the bacteria, the damages are accumulating, and there is no repair. But the damages are accumulating inside our cells as well, and therefore this is the reason why AIDS is of greatest importance to everybody, but out of completely different reason. Because humankind is in danger to destroy its own genetic material using this kind of antibiotic and chemotherapy, which would destroy the genetic material of our mitochondria. This is the name of those bacteria inside our cell producing the energy. And then we go lower and lower with energy production, and this is what we are seeing. And if we then have no regenerative power, um, then it, it becomes a big, big problem. After 87 uh, cancer of the lymph system, which is directly caused by ACT and that has been studied in the 60s and that has been the reason why ACT has been forbidden since then in animals because uh, it uh, killed all of them and caused uh, uh, cancer of the lymphatic system before. If you check the first uh, publications on AIDS and you will see that we have five young men, all of them had uh, the use of nitrites reported. And those nitrites were used for sexual stimulation, but they are very dangerous. They are oxidizing the blood. And if the blood is oxidized, no energy is produced inside the body because we need the oxygen to produce energy. And I think everybody knows this. And if this is not possible, of course, the lung itself suffers first. And when the lung suffers, there is no uh, replacement of the old and dying cells, fungal infections have the possibility to come in and to feed on those uh, and this dead or dying organic matter. And this condition is called PCP. And that's a fungal infection. That's not a protozoan uh, or bacterial infection which is waiting inside the body till the immune system is, is, is going to go down. What we see and this is uh, consistent in all industrialized countries, United States, Europe. 60% have fungal infections, 20% have cancer. And the rest are some rare forms of unicellular organisms. Of course, in the beginning they thought a lot of bacterial infections would show up. So they added the bacterial infections inside the definition of AIDS, but then they have to take them out because they didn't show up. And, and why should uh, established diseases form a new syndrome? We know the conditions why somebody comes down with fungal infections. And of course, we know the treatment options to help the body to, to, to regenerate, to produce uh, its, the, the, the needed energy, right? Drug abusers, who some of them live under persistent stress, or they get dirty street drugs and which immediately would uh, damage the liver or destroy the liver, so they have hepatitis as well, the drug abusers. Huh? We, <laughs> we don't need viruses to explain hepatitis, inflammation. <laughs> you know, alcohol, poisons, yeah? and, and wrong malnutrition, you know, uh, everything is causing the liver to suffer. When people have a, 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 a history of hepatitis, most likely they are positive in the HIV antibody test, or put it uh, other way around. I never found a, a person testing positive who had no problems with its liver, because the liver has a lot of regenerative power, means a lot of decay of cells when being absolutely uh, intoxified, but that means a lot of cells inside your body. And if immune functions are suppressed, then uh, antibodies are produced against your own proteins. All of them had hepatitis. That means the inflammation of, of the liver. And uh, they have such a lot of, of problems because it was a big business selling uh, 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 clothing factors every day. But this destroyed uh, the hemophiliacs. This caused harm to them uh, to a great, great extent. And uh, when AIDS came up, uh, it was the ideal thing to wash their hands and blame it on a new virus which has been transmitted. What they have overseen, and that's a real catastrophe for all chronic disease, 
where the energy is produced inside our cells. These bacteria are so stable, integrated inside the cell that a great deal of their own genetic material has been exported inside the nucleus where there is protection of the genetic material better than in the bacteria themselves, but they have their own genetic material. That has been overseen. And now think about the antibiotics killing bacteria. They are killing our own energy plants inside the cell. And if the cell is not able to produce enough energy, it might die. So you go into persistent inflammatory conditions if the body has enough re regeneration power to build up new cells, or the cell uh, becomes cancerous using fermentation as its source of energy. And in the liver cells, we have uh, most of the mitochondria present, 500 per cell. So that's the highest concentration of mitochondria. Of course, in egg cells of the women, we have 500,000. And therefore, AIDS is of greatest importance for women due to completely different reasons. Because with every shot, with unnecessary shot of antibiotica, they would destroy their genetic material, which they would pass over to the offspring. Because the mitochondria are only given to the next generation uh, through the egg cell. It has been known already in the mid 70s by Anthony Fauci, by the way. They knew when stress hormones are released, the immune functions are immediately uh, suppressed. Because when we are under stress and we have to run away because the lion is behind us, uh, we need no uh, immune functions and waste energy for, for the replication of immune cells. But the dangerous thing is when we have persistent stress, heavy stress, not like outside the streets, uh, but heavy stress. Right? be it nutritional, be it toxic, be it traumatic, uh, psychological or infectious stress. If this stress is persistent, your body produces a lot of stress hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline, <clears throat> and they would activate, they stimulate growth. But this is very dangerous, at, you know, when this persists. So the body wisely makes a reaction against this activation processes, and that's cortisol. And uh, cortisone suppresses every replication of, of uh, uh, proteins and therefore, as well, the replication of cells. So if you are in a state of persistent stress, you are at the same time in a state of persistent uh, hypercortisolism, a huge amount of, of cortisolism. And then you become thinner and thinner. And your regeneration won't work and you become more and more positive, means more and more antibodies. But the most important immune functions are not to uh, uh, take care about foreign or not foreign invaders. This is to recycle your own body. 1% of your body mass, and this is an incredible high number, 10 high to the 12 cells have to be recycled every day. And if this is not possible anymore, then you are in a very bad condition because your body's own proteins are going to endanger your own life because they are poisonous if they are freely floating around inside your body and fungal infections may grow on them. Gallo lost uh, the rights to the test. This was published in Newsweek in 94 and the American government uh, let him fall like a hot potato and already the industry built up a new man. This was uh, uh, David Ho here from, from New York. And he came up with a completely new model of the virus, saying uh, now we have not a slow virus, but we have a, a, a virus à grand vitesse, at high speed. And he was using uh, uh, Kermalis uh, PCR technique, which is a multiplication technique, not a quantification technique, by the way and multiply molecules into its millions and equal those molecules with the virus, right? Absolutely ridiculous. Even more, as those sequences he's going to multiply and equal them with the virus, that's the viral load, are present in everybody. It's just a way to, to save face for the whole AIDS industry because more and more people are aware that uh, this could not be, you know, because inside the AIDS scene there are a lot of critical medical doctors but they saw such a lot of contradiction, and it was discussed on conferences. So there was high, there was high noon for, for a, a new metal and a new test where the pharmaceutical companies could, could make a great business out of it. You know? They say, aha, uh -huh, 
the protein of the virus, it's the first protein is very long and it has to be cut down exactly into its pieces that the new virus is able to be built out of the, 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 the shorter pieces. And now it starts to get funny. Uh, we have eight different kinds of cutting sites where the protease, the enzyme which is cutting down the proteins, should exactly cut the precursor molecule into its shorter molecules. Eight different sites. Because when they uh, invented the HIV sequence, saying that the genetic material of HIV, they couldn't think about such details at this time, and now they have the problem to explain it. And they explained it in a way saying, aha, the protease of HIV is unspecific. But how should this work when the protease is unspecific? How then a, a virus could come into existence when you have eight different sites and it needs to be cut at exactly at those sites to, to build up the, 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 the functional virus particle. And if you have eight sites and the protease is not specific, you mustn't be a mathematician to say that's absolutely impossible that uh, uh, only a single uh, virus could come into existence. And even worse, now they say the protease of HIV, that's unspecific, but our protease inhibitors they are specific. So you interfere on a very basic level of life. And it takes a time that you see the clinical outcome of these damages. And it's worse than ACT. ACT acts uh, uh, quicker on the, on the genetic level. And, uh, but we have the possibility that the bacteria inside our intestines are, are eating up uh, all this ACT, if you have a good digestion, you know, then that's no problem. But the protease inhibitors cannot be cut down because they are artificial. Then they would accumulate over the time inside your body, producing crystallines, destroying the kidney in the first line and other organs. But then when they accumulate and, and uh, would, would cause the all virus kind of effects. And this we have predicted some two and a half years before already in the British Journal Continuum. We have warned about the, not the side effects, but the main effects, you know. And the worst to come, it's the, the failure of the liver and, of course, the blood production. When blood is, 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 is destroyed, and uh, that's, that's what they say is it's the side effects. Or, you know, when f the fatty acid metabolism is destroyed as well, and you have fatty acid accumulation everywhere inside your body, you know. 